Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top-rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Now, here's your host... Lee Cantor here, another episode of GSU ENI Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today on the show, we have Victoria Blunt, the cheesecake specialist. Welcome, Victoria. Hi, Lee. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us about the cheesecake specialist. How are you serving folks? Okay, so I'm the founder of the cheesecake specialist, and it's, as the name suggests, a specialty cheesecake company. Some of my notable flavors are honey lavender, um, German chocolate, banana pudding, and more. Currently, I'm looking for a shared kitchen space. I'm just doing some orders from home right now, but I am looking for space to go into. So uh, how did you know that uh, your cheesecake was good enough to be uh, have its own business? So I've been baking since I was a child. Um, my love of cheesecakes, that started in... 2017, I was helping my aunt with her monthly family dinners. And each month we would try different cheesecakes along with other desserts as well. And there were probably like 30 plus people who would show up every month. And so they were kind of my first test market and they always loved the different cheesecakes we would try. So uh, one of her friends, um, one of her Spelman classmates, she insisted I make this honey lavender cheesecake for her 65th birthday. And that's how everything got started. Now, was there something about cheesecake that you like? Because I'm sure you were baking lots of things. I just like cheesecakes mainly. I mean, that's one of my favorite desserts. And I like them because they weren't, they were kind of different. Not a lot of people are doing cheesecakes. Typically people do cupcakes and like regular cakes. So I just thought, okay, um, I got some advice from another like relative of mine who said, you know, pick something and kind of stick to it. So I chose cheesecakes. And then when did you start experimenting or was that from the very beginning of just instead of kind of the classic cheesecake and then you just started kind of tweaking it and coming up with your own recipes and your own takes on this? Um, I started experimenting from the very beginning. I'm, I'm not sure when I even first made a New York style cheesecake. It was probably about a year after I'd started making them. So um, do you have as a child, like a memory of a cheesecake experience that kind of got you thinking about cheesecake or was it just something that kind of just organically happened? Um, I have a particular childhood experience. I, I mean, I've always loved cheesecakes in general. Now we didn't grow up baking them from scratch per se, but um yeah, I didn't have a particular experience. It was kind of in 2017 when I just started making them. And then I realized I loved it. You know, I loved it. So I just kept going. Now, when you were learning how to bake it, where were you getting that kind of learning from? Was it like um, cookbooks or was it YouTube or was it just a mentor that kind of showed you how to do it? Um, online, mainly YouTube um, and not just videos, but also just reading the recipes and then trying them out and then tweaking them um, where it made sense. And then my aunt, you know, she's been baking for decades now. So she also would help me too. So together you were kind of experimenting. Did you ever have one where it's like, uh, this is inedible. This is not going to, no one should have this. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Have I ever had one like that? I tried a peanut butter cheesecake one time years ago, um, even before my the experience with my aunt, and um, it turned out I, I burnt the cheesecake, so that's why it turned out <laughs> poorly. Um, maybe it would have been good if I had, you know, done it correctly. But baking is one of those things that's almost like chemistry, right? Like you can't, it's not like in some cooking, you can just kind of wing stuff, but this is very precise in how you kind of mix the ingredients and the ratios and things like that. You know, everybody says that every time I say that I bake, that's kind of the response I get, you know, baking. It's not like cooking. It's very precise. It's more like science. And there's truth to that, but there is, there's more room to experiment within baking than you think. 
Um, like I can change the amount of eggs in a recipe and it's not going to affect it too much. I can shift things around like the sour cream ratio. So it is definitely more precise than typical cooking, but you do have some freedom. And then, um, when you have an idea, how do you test it? Do you have like kind of trusted people? You're like, Hey, I got this idea. Why don't you give me your take on it? Or do you just kind of just throw it out there and make it available? A combination of both of those things. So um, I'm kind of looking up recipes and tweaking them and whatnot as well. So I know just based off of some of the comments and whatnot, okay, this should be okay. Then I change it a little bit. Um, And then, yeah, I test it out with my family first. But then I also just make it available and see the reaction to it. Now, do you remember like kind of that first big sale where it was like, wow, that was a decent amount of money for this. This is, this could be something. The first big sale, I would say there's one I'm thinking of in particular, but it wasn't the first one. Um, I'll say the first one was with the city of college park. They were doing this event and bringing in a bunch of business people to look at, um, some real estate, this space that they were trying to sell. sell. And uh, they wanted me to do 75 mini cheesecakes and then like like a complimentary 10 inch for the special guest of honor as well. So um, that was like my first big sell, which was several hundred dollars. And I'm like, okay, this, yeah, this could be something. And then did you have to like, when you're making, you know, one or two, that's, that process is one thing, but when you're making 75 of something, (laughs) that's a different Mm -hmm. process, right? Like that, that requires a different kind of organization and then kind of uh, production. Was, was that a difficult trans transition for you? Or was that something like, okay, I just got to start earlier and just start cranking these out. So I currently offer two sizes of cheesecakes. I offer the full typical 10 inch size. And then I do mini cheesecakes as well, which are, kind of like cupcake size. Mm -hmm. And um, with minis, I always kind of have to do a dozen of each flavor. So even if I am doing a smaller, so my order size right now doesn't go beyond like half a dozen, um, go below that currently, um, unless like I'm doing like a special event and just offering samples. But um, so because I'm making a dozen always, it wasn't so difficult to do 75 but it was still more than what i had done at that point and then like you said earlier that you're making this now transition to get into a commercial kitchen and that kind of environment is Mm -hmm. is that just part of the um kind of organic growth you're getting to a point where that's necessary now in order because of the demand yes um it's also necessary so it's necessary for growth for sure Um, like my refrigerator the most cheesecakes I've ever made um was 240 for the Atlanta Children's Shelter wow that was definitely at capacity (laughs) for my refrigerator space at home so yes uh, um it's definitely necessary for growth but it's also necessary for just like licensing purposes and to be legitimate as well so um yeah the commercial kitchen space is something I've been looking for for a while now And then um, how did you get involved with the Main Street Entrepreneurship Seed Fund? So this is the second um, time around, the second cohort that they've done um, for this program. And I knew about it um, the first time they did it. Um, I didn't apply, though. So I had, like, just gotten into Georgia State at the time. And I just thought, okay, it's going to be too much if I, you know, apply for this program along with just trying to you know, learn the ropes as a college student. So I went to their demo day, though, for the first cohort. And then, um, I mean, I was really impressed. So the second time around, I saw it, I think the application, I saw it around January of this year. Um, I applied in February, um, was, we went through two application rounds. So just a written application and whatnot, which was reviewed by people at Georgia State internally. And then we went through a pitch round which we, and we were pitching to outside like entrepreneurs and investors. And after that, you know, I was chosen as one of the 13 uh, companies in March. 
Wow, congratulations. I mean, that's, uh, what, did you, what have you learned most about having that kind of structure around your business? I have learned, what have I learned most? Definitely focusing on the customer, which sounds so obvious when you think about it, but the average business you know, person who goes into starting a business doesn't really do that. They have an idea and they kind of look to validate that idea um, the, we had like a couple of workshops at the very beginning on customer discovery and, you know, focusing on like, who do you even want to serve in the first place? You know, think about that and then start from there and figure out what they want, what they need, um, and try to find authentic demand for, you know, your offering and then, um, tweak it. And cause we had a design thinking workshop as well, like continue to, um, innovate on it to continue on, to serve them. So that was the main thing, just a shift in mindset and also just being around other student entrepreneurs and like, and alumni and just, you know, think, kind of knowing that we're all in this together and being able to talk to them about my experience, our experiences. Now, has your customer uh, today the same as it was when you started or is it it sounds like you're doing a lot of work for groups and organizations that maybe you know not the individual consumer who buys a cheesecake yeah so my customer starting out is definitely individual clients um mainly middle-aged and older women um and then i still do that um but i have done more like more larger orders for organizations and whatnot I am looking, since I am a college student, I am looking to sell to college students, um, starting at Georgia State, of course. Um, since we just got back on campus, I haven't like gotten that off the ground yet, but that is, that's something, that's the market I'm looking to expand to. So you're looking to um, create a product or, or just take one of your existing products and offer it to uh, students? Well, I do want to create another size, maybe like a personal size, kind of like how you have personal pan pizzas, maybe something like that for students and even, you know, vegan options potentially, since I've been asked about that quite a bit. So I'm, it could be an existing product that I tweak a little bit for students. It could be something new. Now, what's been the most rewarding part of this adventure for you? Because, I mean, you're in school probably when you started, you were thinking, I'll get, go to school, get a degree, get a job. And then now you got this thing going and it seems like it's taking on a life of its own. So how do you kind of balance that? Oh, that's a great question. Lately, just very little sleep. <laughs> we're preparing for demo day, um, which is coming up on Thursday. So, but in general, um, I think it's somewhat like picking days to focus on different things and also using like time blocking and just giving myself a certain amount of time for task. Cause um, in my professional sales class, one thing we talked about is that a task will expand to the amount of time you give it. So if you give something five hours, it's going to take you five hours to do that. So I just have to be very like organized with my time to balance everything. Um, yeah. As far as your original question, like, what's been the most rewarding part of all of this. I think just the learning and like the growth of it all and just pushing myself and seeing what I'm capable of. It's, you know, far greater than what I would have thought, you know, years ago at this point. So I, I think that's the most rewarding for me. Now is, has your experience at, at Georgia state uh, been what you anticipated being, or is it, I mean, it sounds like it's really, stretching you in terms of maybe how you saw yourself initially and what you're becoming? No, I mean, I knew Georgia State. Um, I wanted to stay in state, so I'm from Metro Atlanta, just so I could kind of do the business and go to school at the same time. Um, I knew Georgia State would like provide me with a lot of like options. And I knew college in general, I was homeschooled. So I knew college in general would provide me with a lot of structure and structure that would help me just kind of stay organized and stay like accountable and whatnot. Um, but I didn't anticipate, I didn't anticipate all of the entrepreneurial resources that Georgia State has in the 
like the high quality level of them. They're still fairly young and fairly new, but they are really high quality. So I've definitely gotten way more out of school than I thought I would. I didn't think I would go to school and like talk about entrepreneurship. I thought it was something I would kind of do on my own on the side. I didn't think there would be a community just available through my university to, and resources through my university to help me on this journey. So now in the growth of your business, is there kind of best-selling cheesecakes that people are kind of demanding over and over again? Do you have kind of your Mm -hmm. people's favorites? Yeah, people really love the assorted minis, which is just um, a dozen and a variety of pack of minis. And usually those flavors will be like red velvet, key lime, um, Oreo, um, honey lavender as well. And then people, as far as 10 inches, the turtle is really popular and the honey lavender is popular as well. Now, um, if are they available for sale right now? Or is this something that you kind of special order whenever somebody comes to you and say, hey, I need six or 10 or 100, then you uh, just kind of serve them that way? Or is it like, can somebody go to a website and order one right now? Right now, my website is up. I'm not taking orders through it currently. So my website is cheesecakespecialist.com. Um, you can sign up for the email list and I'm hoping to actually launch like an online ordering system in the next uh, month or two. Um, currently I take orders more like um, on a case, not a case by case basis, but on in, an individual basis. So you can also email me at order.cheesecakespecialist at gmail.com for um, ordering. And then they can say, hey, I got this event. I got like a family reunion. I'd love for everybody to have a cheesecake. And then yeah. you kind of just work yeah, out. The event, right. the date, you know, how many you would want. And my Instagram, if you want to see pictures of them, is um, at Cheesecake Specialist. So. Well, congratulations on all the success. It's an exciting time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then, um, so once again, it's cheesecakespecialist.com to get on your mailing list or wait list if they are ready. At some point, you're going to have the website up and running. So anybody on that list will probably be notified that, hey, it, you can order now, right? Yes. Yes. That's how it will go. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're doing important work and we appreciate you. <laughs> thank you so much, Lee. I appreciate this interview. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on GSU ENI Radio.